The Wildlife Pace program is a compensation program that MWCT introduced six years ago. The goal of this program is to compensate um, the Maasai mainland tree for the loss of livestock in return for not killing the predators. This program is fully supported by Kampi Akanzi, our tourism partner. Each uh, tourist that comes to stay at Kampi Akanzi pay a $100 conservation fee per night and this money is used for this compensation program. Um, I just also want to mention that this is not a full compensation program, it's a more consolation program where the livestock owners are not fully compensated for their livestock. We have three different types of um, compensation payments. Um, if there's no neglectance involved, in other words, if there was a herder present or if they had a good uh, BOMA and the predator still managed to enter, they get 100% payment which is our 100% and that's not 100% of the market value but maybe about 90% of the market value so they are still a big loss for the Maasai and when there's neglectance involved that is when there was no herder present in the field so you expect in such a situation where you find a carcass which has been almost completely eaten by a predator because there was no one to chase off the predator they only get 33% um, compensated and when they had a bad BOMA, which is half neglectance, they get 50% paid up because in the case of a bad BOMA, it's seen that they have made an attempt to, to protect the livestock, but it was not good enough. So there's still an incentive for the Maasai to actually protect their livestock because there's, even with the compensation payment, they still lose. If you have a look at the livestock predation incidents, the trend over the last past six years, these are the livestock predation incidents. These are the different months of the different years. You can see this pattern is there in each year. There's an uh, increase in livestock predation incidents towards the end of the long dry season. Now, a possible explanation for this is because during that time, during the dry, long dry season, Maasai herders need to take their livestock much further away for grazing. And livestock are also a bit weaker because of the um, poorer quality of forage. So they easily get, lose their livestock and uh, livestock lag behind, so at the time when they reach the BOMA they notice that they do not have all their livestock with them. But if the livestock then stays the night out in the field, predators would surely predate on it. So that's why um, there's an uh, increase towards the end of the dry season. But once the rains start, the incidents decrease significantly. That's because there's green pastures close to the BOMAs and they do not need to go so far and the livestock don't get lost on the way. If you have a look at the incidents, hyenas is the number one culprit and then followed by cheetah, jackal, lion, baboon, bird which is a uh, martial eagle, um, leopard, crocodile, buffalo and elephant. Here you see we have elephant and buffalo and other wildlife as well. It's not just the predator compensation program, hence the name wildlife pays. This is basically any loss um, of livestock due to any wildlife we will compensate. So if a livestock get trampled at a water hole with the elephant, we will also compensate for that loss in, in turn for them to protect the wildlife on, on the group branch. And actually you can see although that the most emotion is uh, uh, come from li lion killings, they are not the number one um, predator involved in the killings. It's, it's the hyena which takes the lion's share of the livestock predation uh, money. Um, if you have a look at the retaliating killings of lions during the past years, has the compensation program proved to be successful? It's a definitely big yes. Um, prior to the program, we had on average six lions killed per year. Since the start of the conservation program in 2007, on average, we had one lion killed per year. Um, in 2013, you see we had quite a bad year with three lion killings. We anticipated that as it was the initiation of the new warrior age set, so together with that is a lot of traditional lion hunting. So, uh, but we hope that this year would be a better year. Um, one thing that the compensation program has really helped is to reduce poisoning. In this area, when the, for instance hyenas would predate on livestock, livestock owners would use the agricultural pesticide called furidan to put on the carcasses and they would put the poison out there and any predator or uh, vulture that would feed on the carcass will die. 
And this program has certainly helped to reduce poisoning because there's no prestigious uh, thing to kill a hyena like there is for the Maasai to kill a lion. But now, because of the losses caused by hyenas, we compensate them. There's no need for them to retaliate by putting poison. And in, that, in terms of that, this program has also really been proven to be successful. Um, now, to conclude about this program, it's not the silver bullet for conservation um, for predators outside protected areas, but it really alleviates the burden of living with wildlife. These um, people um, really feel a burden because their livestock is their kind of bank account. So when the livestock are being predated, it's a big loss, financial loss for them. And the program also helped to create tolerance to wildlife and increase their support for conservation. And it's really essential for predator conservation outside on community land from protected areas. And one key thing with such a program, it's, it has to be sustainable. You can't rely on philanthropic money for that, because once that dries up, you're set with a big problem. So it needs to be sustainable, and in our case, it is sustainable, because we use the conservation fee of Campia Kansi to fully support this program. So as long as there's tourists coming, we can sustain this program.